Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a closer look at the new Corona VFB that got introduced in Corona 12. Now, the overall user experience stays the same as it did with the old VFB. So we've got these menus up here, right? So right now we're under the post menu and we've got our tone mapping operators, our boom and glare, etc., etc. All of this works exactly as it did before, although you do have a couple of new operators here, but we're going to talk about them later. Uh, you know, the stats tab works exactly the same. The history list works exactly the same. DR menu uh, works exactly the same. And you probably guessed that the light mix menu works exactly the same, although there are new features here. But again, we're going to talk about them a little bit later on. OK, uh, then your uh, pass selection sort of drop down is located right here. You can switch between the different kinds of passes and you've got these helper buttons right at the top here, as you did before. Now, one thing that you've probably noticed already is the fact that the actual design of the VFB changed quite considerably. And so the new VFB looks more modern. It has new design elements and overall all the buttons and UI elements have less contrast so that the VFB doesn't get in your way, visually speaking. Now, this new VFB is still a bit of an ongoing project for us. We're actively listening to your feedback and there's still things that we want to do to it to improve it. OK, with Corona 12, what we wanted to do is we wanted to start this new project and this new VFB is created in the Qt framework, which uh, should mean that it is more performant for you as an end user. And it also means that it is a little bit easier for us to add new features to it. So that's good news, right? And then uh, with Corona 12, what we also wanted to do is we wanted to start this new design sort of framework for the VFB. And, uh, you know, we also wanted to add as many new features as we could in our release cycle. So bottom line, we still want to improve the, this new VFB. This is not the final version we have in mind just yet. Uh, we still want to improve the user experience. We want to improve the design and we want to add new features, obviously. And so if you have any suggestions of your own, please let us know as always. Right. Right. OK. And so uh, with the general user experience of the new VFB being pretty much the same, how about we take a look at what some of the new features are? OK, that's what we're going to be doing next here. Now, one of my personal favorites is definitely the ability that you now have to switch between the different light mix setups from right inside the VFB. OK, so check this out. Currently, we have the singular light mix setup. It's called the light mix day setup and we've tweaked the light some. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to stop the rendering process and we're going to add another uh, light mix render element. OK. And we're also going to make sure that it's named a little bit more descriptively because, you know, good scene management is always smart. And then we're going to restart the uh, rendering process. We're going to start up the interactive render again. It's going to take a second because it is a pretty heavy scene. Uh, but before you know it, as you'll see, uh, we're going to be back in action here. And there we go. Uh, the scene has parsed and it's already rendering now. And so now what we can do is uh, we can just switch from our light mix day setup to the light mix night setup. OK, and because this is a night setup, what we're going to do is we're just going to disable the Corona Sun. We're going to disable the environment and we're going to disable all these rest, uh, the rest of the lights. OK, that weren't specified in any of the uh, light select render elements. OK, so this is our light mix night setup. But now if we want to go back to the day setup, we can just simply select it in the VFB here and we get that light mix day setup loaded right back in. OK, so now we can seamlessly seamlessly switch between the two, make all the necessary changes, right? Maybe we want to disable that other light. We want to go back to the light mix day setup. Maybe we want to uh, disable the lights inside of the walking house here, etc., etc. So this gives you um, a lot more flexibility for when it comes to working with light mix. And it kind of goes without saying, but you can add as many light mix variations as you like. OK, now another cool thing that we've added here is a new operator and it's the lift gamma gain operator. So you can put this operator anywhere in the stack you'd like. Kind of obviously depends on what you're trying to achieve with it. But bottom line is you have control over the lift gamma and gain parts of your image. All right. So this works very similarly as it does in post production tools such as, for example, DaVinci Resolve, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So now essentially with the lift parameter, you are controlling the shadowy parts of your image uh, with gamma, you're controlling sort of the middle tones in your image. And with the gain, you're controlling essentially the highlights in your image. OK, so this was added by popular demand and we really hope you'll enjoy using it.
Now we haven't stopped there. We've also played with the history tool here. So uh, right now we're entering out an image um, in this resolution that you see right here. So 2000 by um, 1100 something, right? We're going to save it into our history list. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the rendering resolution. In this case, because we're running the interactive render, we're just going to make the window smaller. And as you can see, we're rendering at a much lower resolution. But so now with the new VFB and the updated history tool, uh, what you can do is you can compare the two renders even though uh, they've been rendered in different resolutions, right? So that is now possible to do. And what you can now also do is you can compare uh, two different images uh, with the history tool. Uh, you can compare two different images that have different aspect ratios. So as you can see, rendering out this vertical image right here, but we can compare it with the previous image that we've rendered, which was a horizontal image. So you can also do this stuff now. Plus, on top of that, what you can now do is you can use the Corona VFB as basically as the Corona image editor. So as you can see here, uh, we have just an empty 3ds Max scene open. We're going to bring up the Corona VFB. OK, and uh, what we've done here, we've actually saved one of our renders as a CXR file. OK, so we're going to drag the CXR file into the VFB now. OK, and you're going to be able to see that it kind of gets stored in the history list here. And if you now click on this little uh, pencil icon, you're going to be uh, displaying this image in the VFB and you're also going to be able to edit it now. So if we go under post now, uh, we can start playing with the exposure, with the curves. Um, with you can disable any of these operators, add new ones, etc., etc. Right? You can basically just edit this image as you would any other Corona render. Now, what you can also do is uh, you can, for example, load up any of the saved in render elements. In this case, we're going to load in the Light Mix Night render element. And as you can see, you can also now tweak the light mix setups that you have saved in the CXR files. OK, so we're just going to play with the lights here. Well, we do need to enable this one as well if we want to see it, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So you can make changes to your CXR images just like you would in the Corona image editor. All right. Now, if you want to save out your art piece, uh, you can just go under the history list again and click on the save button. OK, and then you can just save it as a PNG file or, you know, you can also save it all as a Corona EXR image again which means that if you save it as a CXR, you can at any point in time always load it back into the Corona VFB and continue working on it from where you've left off with all the changes that you've made in your previous session. Well, hello, everybody. Nate's from the future here. Just wanted to make a quick note here that uh, currently, if you want to save these types of updated images, you can only save them by clicking on the save button in the history list. In the future, with the next Corona version, uh, we're going to try to update that main save button to also do the same thing because currently it doesn't. OK, so just a bit of a uh, quick note here. And in case you're wondering, um, I really can't tell you anything about the future because the temporal police would get me. So, um, yeah, no spoilers for me. And now, if you are into saving every little bit of performance that you can, we also have implemented a neat feature that's basically just a checkbox with which you can delay the bloom and glare calculations. So if you're interested in doing that, well, then all you have to do is you need to expand the bloom and glare menu here uh, and make sure that the compute after render here is toggled to on. Once it is toggled to on, the bloom and glare is only going to update when the render finishes rendering. Now, just as a bit of a note, even if you have this toggle toggle to on and you change something in the image that would require recalculating the bloom and glare, it will still recalculate. It's just that with this toggle toggle to on, it won't recalculate the bloom and glare unless it has to. So basically, it won't recalculate the bloom and glare every couple of passes. Now, in case you're mid project or maybe you're not quite as used to the new VFB yet, you can switch back to the old one. And we're going to show you how you can do that in the next couple of seconds. So it's all real easy. Just bring up your render setup, go under the system menu, then system settings. And in here, you can see that you have the VFB type that you can set. So just switch it from the Corona VFB 2.0 to the Corona VFB one, hit OK, and then restart 3ds Max. And you're going to be back in action with the old VFB.
All right, and that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've learned something new and we do hope that you like the new VFB. Remember, it's a bit of an ongoing project for us, so we're going to be happy to hear any and all feedback that you have. Uh, but yeah, that's a wrap for this tutorial. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>